Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews, where today we're checking out a 2004 Great Harbour GH47. At the time of shooting this video, this one was up for sale for $749,000 and she was lying in Jacksonville, Florida. Great Harbour is actually one of the first boats I've featured on this channel, and although I've got more than 200 boats since then, this one still offers some of the best liveaboard accommodation, especially for a boat of this size. And speaking of size, she's just under 47 foot in length, just under 16 foot beam. But amazingly, she's got a draft of around 3 feet. It's easy to step aboard, you get these access ways on both the port and starboard side. But it's when you step inside that the Great Harbour comes into its own. So immediately the first impressions is I love the woodwork that's throughout the entire yacht. It's got such a nice glossy finish to it. You've got a large saloon for all your friends and family to join you. There's plenty of natural light, and there's also storage underneath all the seats as well. And not only do the leafs open out on the table, but you can also raise the table as well. So if you wanted to use this for meals or snacks, you can raise this up too. And as to the carpet, the carpet has all been custom made for this yacht, but it's been designed in a way that the carpet can be removed. So when it's cold, they keep the carpet down, but when it's nice and warm, you can lift that carpet up. And as I pan the camera around, you'll notice the windows are all opening for extra fresh air. And then for entertainment, we've got this large pop-up TV on the starboard side. I also want to point out just how much headroom is throughout the entire yacht. It doesn't matter where you are, there's at least a good six and a half feet headroom. A few short steps down and you'll find a galley on the port side. I was impressed with the amount of countertop space we have, especially we have to use air fryers and George Foremans and things like that these days. We've got a dishwasher underneath. You've got opening portholes to the side, both for light and also ventilation. There's a tremendous amount of storage and it all has that push button lock effect. We've got the GE convection microwave oven and the glass top four burner stove. And here not only do you see the storage, but with the carpet lifted, you can see the flooring that's throughout the yacht as well. And this has got your American style side by side fridge freezer with a water and ice dispenser. So you get plenty of room for all your provisions, and that way you can enjoy liveaboard cruising, but you can also spend a bunch of time at anchor without having to head back into shore. And then as we head forward, as we head down the passageway for about three years, I was work from home and all the COVID situation, and this one had the perfect setup. This one's actually converted one of the cabins, and this has got a built-in office. Again, you'll see that high gloss woodwork. You've got an opening porthole for light and ventilation. There's plenty of space in here for you to work while you're underway. But that desk is actually a single berth and there's a cushion available that they can put into place if you ever wanted to use it as one. And opposite is where you're going to find the guest stateroom and this one's got some real clever design features to it. So at first glance it looks like it's bunk beds with two single bunks. But that lower bunk you can actually pull forward and it slides out and converts and this then becomes a full size bed. You'll see there's plenty of storage options in here with all the drawers and cabinets. And if you're not using the top bunk, you'll see it's got a locking mechanism. And you can raise this up and you can lock it into place. This is a boat that was designed for cruising as well as liveaboard use. And I just love the fact that everything seems to always lock into place. Whether it's doors, cabinets, the bed, you name it. You don't have to worry about anything moving while the boat's underway. And behind the main door, you'll see we've got more drawers available, but we also have private access into the guest bathroom. And as well as accessing it from that cabin, you can access it from the main passageway. And in here, in the guest heads compartment, you'll see we've got a full stand-up shower. We're going to have a vacuum flush head system. I like the amount of room that's in here. You can actually use the shower and enjoy it. I also like the fact that the shower and the toilet are separate. We've got a frosted porthole, that way you've still got privacy, but you can open that for light and ventilation. And behind the door, you're going to find a mirror, which has also got storage behind it, as well as a sink in the countertop. And as we head out again, you can see that high gloss deck that we have on here throughout. I challenge you to find any area of this yacht that makes it look or feel as if the yacht's 20 years old. And then on the bow is where you're going to find the owner's stateroom. This is a queen-sized island berth. It's easily accessible from either side. There's storage underneath the bed. There's also plenty of storage throughout the cabin itself. And even this far forward in the yacht, I have no issue with headroom and I'm six foot two. 
And as well as the opening portholes on either side of the hull, we do also have a large overhead hatch. And I hate to say it, but not only does this give light and ventilation, but it's also a good escape means if you ever need it, which hopefully you never do. And for entertainment, we do have a TV mounted up on the bulkhead. And as you'd expect, this stateroom is fully en suite. But before that, you see we get plenty of hanging locker space. Again, with that push button lock mechanism. And in the ensuite heads compartment, you're going to see again we've got the full standing shower. This is separate from the toilet itself. That toilet is a vacuum flush head. We've got a large mirror, you got the sink, you got the countertop, and there's more storage behind that mirror as well. And then as we head aft down the passageway opposite the galley is where you're going to find a utility room. And for those not familiar with the Great Harbour lineup, one of their features is the fact that you've got so much access to the engines itself. So as well as having access to things like your fuel and oil water separators and your breakers and things like that, if we pop down in here, you can get to the engines. And this yacht's powered by twin Yanmar. It's four JH3 HTE engines. They're 100 horsepower each. They've got around 2700 hours on the clock. And this is good for eight and a half knot cruise. And she's got a thousand gallons of fuel, she's got 200 gallon holding tank, and she's got 500 gallons of fresh water. And at eight and a half knots, you're looking at a range of somewhere in the region of 3,000 nautical miles. We also have a 12 and a half kilowatt Westerbeek generator, and we also have a 20 gallon hot water heater. But look how clean the engines are, look how clean the engine room is, look how accessible everything is, it is so easy to service and maintain. But if you told me this was a brand new yacht, I would have believed you. And being Yanmar engines, not only are they extremely economical, they're also extremely reliable, but it's also easy to get service and then spares. So when you are cruising, you don't need to worry about where your next port of call has to be. But there's also plenty of room in this yacht that you can carry an abundance of engine spares with you wherever you go. And if we make our way back into that utility room, you'll see that this one's got both a washer and a dryer, with a compactor in between. And then the breaker panel we have here for both the AC and DC controls. I like that it's illuminated and I like that it says clearly labelled. It's easy to work out what's to get switched on or off. And then if we head back out and go towards the main saloon, I'll then take you up into the pilot house. Again, I love the woodwork that's in here, not only for the finish, but also for the craftsmanship involved. You can see that carpet can be lifted up along here. And then up here we have what's referred to as a captain's quarter, but this would also make a fantastic cabin to stay in as a watch berth, especially if you're doing long distance passage making. Behind those curtains, this is all wraparound windows. There is ample storage throughout. Not only do we have storage underneath the bed, but opposite the bed, we've also got additional drawers. The countertop space, and this does have an opening hatch that leads straight into the helm, and that way you can not only keep an eye out of the windows, but you've also got easy access to all the monitoring and alarm systems. And behind the door to this cabin, you'll see that we do have full height hanging locker space. Personally, if this was my yacht, I would also use this for wet weather gear because it's right next to the helm, so it'd be easily accessible. And this cabin does have its own head compartment. There's no shower in this one, but you do have the vacuum flush toilet, which I'd also imagine you'd use when you're at the helm too. And then as we head out, as we make our way down the passageway, again you'll see that there's an abundance of windows on this yacht, all of which are opening, and that way you get the fresh air and ventilation for cruising. I love the fact that there's as much space up here for your family and friends to join you. And not only do we have storage underneath that seating area, the seating can double up as an extra berth. You've also got this table that folds out, and it can be raised and lowered. And we also have storage in the deck as well for things like the window covers. And as I pan down to zoom in and underneath the table to show you that it can be raised and lowered, look at how thick the soft furnishings are. It doesn't matter where you are in this yacht, it's such a comfortable boat to sit down, relax and enjoy. I'm always a fan of boats like this when you get easy access to both the port and starboard deck, straight from the helm. And this one is loaded with electronics, from the compass to the analog gauges, full engine instrumentation. You've got the ZF Mathers electronic engine controls. You've got a weather station, Simrad autopilot. You've got the Simrad open array, 48 mile radar, chart plotter, GPS, depth gauge. You've got the AIS, VHF, you name it, this one has it all. 
And for maneuverability, not only do we have the twin screw engines, but this one's got both bow and stern thrusters. So whether you're doing a close quarter manoeuvring in the marina, or whether you're going through lock gates, this one's going to be a real easy yacht to manoeuvre, especially for its size. Then if we step out the side door on the starboard side, as I say, I love the fact that you have this side access. It's so much easier to communicate with people on the dock or on the lock gates. You'll see we've got solid handholds throughout. There's always something to hold on to. There's always a wide passageway, which as much as it's easy to do tied up in a beautiful area like this, I'd imagine it's also very easy to do while the boat's underway. And then if we pop through to the bow itself, not only do we have the storage lockers on either side, these can have cushions on there, and that way you've got comfortable seating, but there's also space on the deck. You can bring out some chairs here too. There are two anchor windlasses on here. They both can be operated from the bow, but they can also be operated from both the helm and the fly ridge. And each anchor has approximately 200 feet of 716 galvanized anchor chain. And with any boat, storage is always a premium, but even more so with liveaboard cruisers. And I just love the fact that everywhere you look, you're always going to find a cabinet, locker, drawer. There's always somewhere to put ropes, fenders, or your personal belongings. And then this one does have a flybridge. I'll go up there and I'll show you what that's like in just a second. And as I make my way to the flybridge, I want to point out that the Great Harbour GH47 itself is capable of going through the Great Loop and then going through the locks in Chicago. But it typically has a folding framework. But this one's got the fixed framework. So if you are looking at doing the Great Loop, you need to work with Great Harbour in order to do that. You'll see here on the stern, we've got a sports tender with a hydraulic crane installed on board, making it easy to keep the boat without having to worry about towing it. And again along the stern here, you see that we've got more storage lockers. And it's really easy steps to get up onto the flybridge, which I think is great, because that way your friends and family can join you as well. And as I make my way up here, you'll see just how much space we have. So on the aft end, it's open and exposed. You could easily lay out sun loungers here. But the forward section under that custom framework, you see it's all got that canopy cover with a bimini top. You see we've got all the electronics. This includes cameras on either side. And these are on gyroscopes. There's cameras throughout the entire yacht. And with a comfortable seat in here, you see if your friends and family, there's also storage underneath all the seats. And as we take a closer look at that framework, I like how solid the framework is. It works really well as a handhold. It's also got built-in lights. And whilst I can't fault any of the electronics that's installed, you've also got the ability to add additional electronics if you ever wanted to at a later time. But not only is the lower helm fully equipped, the flybridge is too. So we've got the helm seat with seating on either side. Again, that way close family and friends can be with you. You get the full engine instrumentation. You've got the Simrad autopilot. The Simrad multifunction display. And this one's obviously got the engine controls and the all-important bow and stern thrusters. And standing here at helm, just look how much visibility you have. Despite being almost 50 foot in length, it just instills so much confidence in you to drop those lines and head on out. I'd like to thank both Joe and Eric from Great Harbour for allowing me to come on board and take a look at this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments if you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. And I look forward to catching you on the next one.